Our next guest is Stephen Miller. He is an author, a playwright. He's done all kinds of things. He's also a mad softball player. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, Donna. Thanks for so having we, me. You actually, we did meet on the softball field. We were doing that charity outing, yes, right? Yes, for uh, Mick DeRussell and the, I think it's the ALS Foundation, correct? Yes. And also breast cancer breast awareness cancer from awareness. the um, all of that from the um, Ronkonkoma Chamber of Commerce. The Ronkonkoma. 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 I love when Chris Roach, uh, the comedian, always says Ronkonkoma. You know, when I grew up in St. Louis, I didn't know any of these uh, names. Like the Sagatos look like the soggy toast to yeah, me. Like you know, when I grew up in Brooklyn, I didn't know. You don't know any of these names <laughs> yeah. either. Uh, so there you go. But um, you are an award-winning author. Yes. Bestseller. Big time. Yeah, it's cool, right? It's <laughs> super cool. I like your journey. So you were like a cop, then you became an attorney, then you became an author. Yeah, it's just, it was a natural progression for me. I just uh, move on. Okay. I'm flighty. <laughs> I like to do things and just continue to, to move forward. So it's it's been a pretty cool journey so far. Now let's talk about your books because they're chiller thrillers, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's four of them. Okay. The, the last two I put together as a... Um, a combination set, two for the price of one. The third one was called Distant Innocence, and it was part one of a two-part uh, series. And that did really well. That um, got up to the top five in Amazon. So I wrote part two, which didn't do as well. It went to the top 20, but it didn't do as well. And I put them all together now, and both of them together, and any proceeds go to the ALS Foundation, the Eleanor and Lou Gehrig uh, ALS Foundation, because it's cool to give back. So once your book kind of like broke even for you, made a little money for you, mm -hmm. uh, you weren't dependent on it for your income. No, not at all. Then you said, you know what? Let me do something nice. L with let me this. do something cool with it because you know if you can't help, then you know then why bother? Why, why bother doing it if you can't help out a little bit? Who kind of gave you that mantra in life to pay it forward and make a difference? Anybody in not pr particular? I don't think anybody in particular as much as um, the example that other people, I, I mentioned Mick Russell, who's like the showbiz wizard of Long Island, <laughs> who kind of got this whole thing started for me with publicity and, and whatnot. He had contacted me to play in a celebrity softball game. And I was, other than having the one book out that was doing pretty well, I was a relative, like nobody. And it snowballed from there. So I watch huh. a guy like him, who does all this stuff for no reason other than to give back. And it's it's a great example. It's a, it's a great um, pattern to look after. So I like him a lot, too. I, you know, and it's funny because I emcee those games. And yes. so I'm behind behind the plate. But I do love to hit and I love to run. So, yeah. like, you guys let me, like, you know, when it's my turn up to bat, you're like, Drake. You know? Yeah, and it was pretty funny because I, I think people hear, like, you're an author and they think, like, you're a spaz. And I kind of went out on the field, and I was like, wow, you could play. And I'm like, yeah, well, let's yeah, here. You, you hit a you lot know. in. You really yes. did for the celebrity team. That was pretty cool. Um, people love your writing, though. They, you, you're That's kind to say that it was the people that brought awareness to you um, that helped you on the journey. But, you know, your writing's got to be pretty good for people to actually want to keep referring it over and over and over again. I don't know. You know, I don't want to be arrogant and say it, it's you can, good. Yeah. Or it's okay. I give you permission a little bit. But... People seem to like it, and they keep asking me to write more, so I continue, you know, I'm going to continue to write more because it's it's actually one of the, for me, it's great because I don't have to leave the house. I just sit behind the computer. It's awesome. There's no commute. There's your no, smoking jacket. Yeah, and your, like, I sit there in my smoking jacket with my feet. pipe and my slippers, <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, to, for me, it's just fantastic, and now I'm branching out. Um, because I was asked to. Yeah, cool stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, let's, where do you want to start? You want to start with the screenplays that have done really well, well for you, or? Well, I got asked to do um, a screenplay, a, a true story. It's, um, people can go to the site, it's called Heroic Love Movie, um, by pro these five producers who are producing a true story about um, a Vietnam POW, a pilot, and his kid brother, who was also a pilot, who didn't have to serve, but served three tours and did the most dangerous missions in order to try and save his brother. So it was really cool to have those people come to me to write it. I mean, it's a little nerve wracking because you're dealing with somebody else's life story, but in, in order for them to come to me, I was like, I was, it was really cool. And I wrote it and the most nerve wracking moment is when they're all reading it. Cause you're like, oh my God, what if they hate it? Then you know, but they loved it, so 
it's in pre-production now, okay. and it's out of my hands. You know, you, you it gets you get hired, you write it, then they take over. Right. The producers. And it so. may not, in the final film, may not be word for word, but, but no, they have script doctors who work say, on they're it. They're going to work on um, it and turn it into dialogue. Mm -hmm. and, right. Oh, I wrote all the dialogue. The nice part about it was um, one of the script doctors basically said, for me, it was really nice to say that she said, "Leave it alone." Wow. Yeah, which was kind of cool because it was the first screenplay I'd ever written. So it was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Sometimes, right? Yeah, I'm like, I don't I'm like, really know so how to do this. I'm just going to do it. Dumb that right. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And I just got um, asked to write another, so I finished that off, and we're going to see where that takes off to. Lovely. So. And what about your Broadwayness? What's going on with that? Um, I, know I you got can't asked. Really, I can't I exactly but let's say just what do it a is. Broad stroke, if you will, uh, of what the genre see, is. See, this that you're is doing. the weird part: okay. is I didn't pitch for any of these. I got asked by a producer, by a Broadway producer, to come in and interview about they're doing a play about one of the really big events, probably the biggest event in rock and roll history. So again, I can't say it, but there were like half a million people there. Yeah, there was a lot and of people. A lot of people. Okay. And so the actual producers of that event came to me and were like, well, we want you to write what's called the book uh, for the musical, you know, the dialogue between the characters. And, you know, what do you say? I don't say no. But now I have to learn how to write. Yeah, at that point, I was like, okay, now I have to learn how to write a Broadway book. So it's all even a learning process for me more so than anything else. And you're going to turn this into um, an interesting experience. I it's would hope have so. A lot, no, no, no. <laughs> what I mean by that is, like, it's going to have a lot of different interactivity yes. and things like that. So yes. it's not just writing something that, you know, this line, this line, this no. line. You're kind of stylizing, if you will, the whole right. experience. You have to stylize the event to make it accessible to the audience, where the audience feels like they're a part of it. Um, which, again, in my ignorance of it, seems kind of easy to do. I mean... That's just because you were born to do what you do, Stephen. I that, guess. You know, in all the interviews where I interview people, you know, there's a reason there's a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. Right, You right. were born to write. I guess. I yeah, hope so. <laughs> I think so. Uh, fun, fun stuff. Um, who do you read? Do you read anybody else's works, by the I way? I do. Okay, who um, do you like? There's a guy, he wrote L.A. Confidential, his name is James Elroy, who writes like these really hard, um, ugly, almost ugly books, but I find they're so dark that I find them really entertaining. And there's <laughs> almost like a dark humor to it where you read stuff and you're like, oh, this is hysterical, where other people might think it's a little off. Right. I find it funny. So, you know, I don't read that much anymore because I spend my time... When I say I'll sit home and write, I that could be like an 18-hour day. Like, wow. I'm just sitting there bah, 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 all day. You know, this screenplay I wrote that I hand... Now, I was under contract and, and deadline. I mean, it's not like I, I wrote it out and then said, okay, send it away. That went through like six or seven different drafts that I, that I had to go through constantly. And I edit myself. I don't give for content. I mean, for English, I'll give it to an editor. But for content, no one touches my work but me i don't like it <laughs> yeah i don't blame yeah. you i mean come on you're an art uh, artiste yeah. um you're also doing a couple of other things you've got a couple of radio shows going on you've got one that's on now which you've got is, one that's happening you know which is also because of you oh really i was on your radio show right if you remember when yes. you were back in in yeah. huntington and the producer of that show left and started another station had me on as a guest and it did pretty well so he said, why don't you come and have your own show? I'd never done radio before, so I did, and it did pretty well, right? But what happened was, was that they had an executive producer who kept bringing on guests, and it was like an assembly line, and I hated it. it w and it didn't matter who the guest was, and it was no reflection upon the guest because there were some people who were really cool people. But it was like, I'm on the air for three hours, and I had 12 guests. And I was like, this stinks. You know, it's like an assembly line. So I left. Mm. And I got a lot of hate mail. It was so funny from the listeners, from people yeah. who worked at the station. Like, how could you leave? We spent all this time and energy on your show. And I was like, well, that's kind of lame. You know, like, I just wanted to leave. And then I wound up speaking to a mutual friend of ours, Jim Savali, over at Village Connection in Huntington. And he said, you know, the door's always open for you to have your show here. 
Okay, so that's what you're doing now. Yeah, I'm do it's called uh, Throwback Thursday, and it's like you just, just need Bobby like, Rydell. I, I've had mm. Bobby Rydell, you've, you've got Dion, some big names, yeah, the Young Rascals, Tommy James, um, Carmine of Peace. They've all been guests on the show, and the nice part about that show is I get one of the conditions with Jim was. I don't want anybody to produce my show. I want to do it myself. I want to do what I want to do, and uh, or I'm not going to bother. Right. And he was like, sure, come on. So, you know, it's all <laughs> As good As a mom, fun. I don't know what it would have been like to be your mother, to have your... It you're, was you're, hell. You're like, I was going to say, <laughs> my poor you mother. seem like you've got so much bravado now. Can you imagine what was like little Stephen Miller like? Terrible. Same? Same? Ter worse. A terror. <laughs> worse. A terror. <laughs> but at least now you found a creative outlet for your energy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I don't think okay. there's anything wrong with being... Um, almost selfish in the way you approach what you do. Because at the end of the day, like like I said, when I left the one station, we had done, like we had a lot of listeners and they were really ticked off that I just one day walked in. I, w I wasn't under contract, so I was like, yeah, that's it. That's the last show. And I got so much hate mail, it was hysterical. I was actually having to laugh at it. Like, wow, take it easy. So, <laughs> Simmer down now. Yeah, right? take, it, down. take it light. Um, but I do believe that uh, people, you know, of your uh, stature, uh, it's great that you're that you're writing. You've gotten recognized. You've gotten nice money from your screenplays. You're doing things on Broadway. You've got your own radio show. What's your next little reach? Is there something else you want to do that, if I was the fairy godmother of all creatives, I wow. could say, okay, Stephen Miller, ding. What is it? I don't know. I, I have to right say, I have this? to be very honest. Donna. Yeah? I have no idea because I kind of just go with the flow. Uh huh. And what about acting? You want to be in something? No, no, I don't. <laughs> I, I have the, you know, the face for radio, so I don't really want to get into acting. But, you know, a, as I've gone along, it's all sort of, and, and it's all sort of come a little bit easy. Okay. So I haven't, as I said, I didn't have to pitch a studio with a screenplay. I didn't have to pitch a producer when they came my way. I said, oh, oh, okay, this is this is great. This is the way it should be, rather than. So who knows? I, I don't know. The path of least resistance. Of least resistance, Got yes. It. Well, enjoy your journey. I thank you. Donna. I mean, you've overcome so many things. You've overcome your own health challenges. You uh, overcome some cancer things. survivor. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, cancer survivor. Not only cancer survivor, heart attack too. Yes, two of them. Did you forget about those? Uh, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> Wait, does cancer trump heart attack, or does heart attack? Go well, it depends. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It, it depends. But I. But you're the, doing good now. Yes, I am. I am healthy and just re it's really going well. So I'm, you know, I can't. I, I really couldn't be more satisfied with what's gone on. Well, congratulations. Oh, we look you. forward to wonderful things. Thank you for being my friend. It's oh. always so much fun. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Miller. Check him out. Thanks for watching.